Red Hood Outlaw number 43. Yeah, Love Della uh, writing and uh, Christopher Williams on the art. Uh, which I'll get out of the way first. The art's a bit rough. Um, one of the few things this series has typically had going for it is, is high quality art. And I, I think even you guys, if just at a glance, would agree that it's had some good artists on the book, as a rule. Sure, yeah. There was a lot of decks yeah. I saw you back in the L edition, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there was. Um, pretty much every other arc for a while was Dex of Soy. Um, and uh, Pete Woods recently, si- since the titling of, of uh, Outlaw, I'd say he's been the, mm-hmm. the principal artist. Uh, which, again, looks pretty good, so can't complain on that department, which is why this sticks out a bit more. A lot of just like really smooth, odd looking faces without the, the definition and depth to them and like just some odd light placement on them to try and give it some depth and like direction, but without some of the other features just doesn't doesn't really work. Um as for the issue itself, uh it's kinda all over the place. Like it has an intro, which is uh, Susie Sue in the uh, the Iceberg Lounge, who was one of the big sisters. They left her in charge of it. And it opens with her dead, nar- narrating it, with like 10 swords sticking out of her going, well, I was just assassinated. But she gets back up. De- death doesn't really do anything for her anymore. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why. Reasons. Um, but, you know, she's like, oh, well... Do, you know, the, one of her partners comes in. It's like, do we need to tell you know, Jason about this? And she's like, yeah, no, no point. He'll know. And she's like, well, we could, we could give him a warning. She's like, well, no, they already got out whatever they were here for. She points at an empty safe. And he's like, he'll find out soon enough. It's not like we have his phone number. So, yeah, sure. And then it cuts to a scene that I should enjoy, um, in theory, in, in the action side of it. I think with a better artist, I really would. Um, because it's it's a, it's a James Bond fight on top of a moving train, essentially, mm-hmm. with the outlaws fighting these two strongish twins, sisters. I, I don't know. They, they, they seem to be handling themselves okay. It's a bit unclear. Um, but, I mean, it's a sequence that is mostly just, hey, here's the team back in action, kind of all together now, because it's been a while. And I think with a, with a good artist, could have been a really fun sequence. As it is, it's just kind of a... A bit bland. It doesn't. It doesn't have any good pacing or charisma to it. And like I said, some of the stuff just looks a bit off. So that kind of ruins that a little bit. Anyway, they're, they're, they're there. Uh, the, the outlaws are there to get into the train to try and figure out what they're here to steal. And there's there's some like artifact, and that's actually tied to the old cast, which are the if if you recall, which I'm sure you don't, um, from X amount of issues ago. These were the people who brought Jason back to life now, and he had that magic sword that could fight them, if if, if this is ringing any bells whatsoever. Um, I remember but, someone with a big metal jaw. That was the that's like all I remember from those two issues that I read. Uh, it, was, it was before those issues that you read, Pete. Oh. It was from the arc before that, I think. Oh, that, cause I, do you think I recall something from this book, that I, one of the issues no, that I didn't read, just from no, what you I, told us? I, I barely recall it, so I don't blame you. So it's it's fine. Just you know, maybe maybe the listeners remember. Who knows? Uh, I mean, probably might do a better job than me. Um, but anyway, you know, these creatures—they're basically like possessed. Um, the like these bodies, and then they start like mutating out of it. Um, they kind of look like a cross between parasite and doomed. Is kind of how I would describe the look of them. Um, they're a fine design. You know, we have a bit, a bit of a tussle with them. Try to see, you know, what's going on. Some jokes, you know. One of them explodes, and I'm like, "I'll buy the seven beards." And Bizarro's like, "Eh, just mine." But still, this is gross. Uh, but yeah, the, the untitled—that's what they're actually called. They, you know, they incubate in the human bodies, and uh, and I was just like, "Shouldn't you kind of like recognize them immediately?" You know, you, you're you did a lot of stuff with the the old cast, and you, you're the you're the only living person who can re- wield the old blades, if you recall that. Why, why didn't you recognize them immediately? He's like, I don't know. And does this big dramatic close up on his eyes. And again, I wish the art was better because the, the panel in theory is is a solid, uh, in terms of the pacing of, of that moment, should work. Um, but yeah, it, it's just not really great. Um, but anyway, they meet there. They've got an anonymous source in there and it's uh, General Glory, who's representing the US government there because they're in like Germany on this train. 
Uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm in charge from this point on. And Jason's like, yeah, well, like hell you are. And Bizarro's immediately like, roger that. He's like, well, what, what's going on? He's like, well, he said he's in charge. It's like, so? But yeah, no, this guy, he's, he's, he's an old guy. He's He's been like doing it for like 75 years, but he has got powers. So he's still going. Uh, but yeah, they're talking about this. They, you know, they, they were trying to steal this this obelisk and bring it to Karak and you know, do all the stuff that they were doing. And that's basically the end of the issue for their plot. And then we have two actual outro scenes, like tags at the end, which is weird because they couldn't just end it with one. Uh, the first one is uh, at Margun's home because she's kind of villainous now. And she's with what seems to be like a, a Talon, like a Court of Owls mask, from what I remember. Like one of the, not not the Talon actually, maybe it's one of the, the actual owls kind of who sit around. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she's, she's there and there's a knock on the door. She, you know, she's uh, she's getting, um, I think she's taking applications for, uh, for a teacher, uh, her thing, but with like ex-villains and stuff. Um, and there's a knock, you know, who is... Uh, one last applicant, and it's uh, it's Maller and the Brain. So I like those. You know, I haven't seen them in a while. Yeah, I remember them showing up on a cover and then having to temp temper my excitement because it's still Globedale yeah. writing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're on this cover. Um, well, I'll have to double check. But yeah. I mean, I mean, I like them showing up in general. So sure, I'll I'll give it points to that. And then there's another outro, which is. Uh, Jason's kind of girlfriend that he was with before, who I think he left the sword with her. She's just in her apartment. The dogs go wild at the door. She goes there, and there's nothing there except the sword. Um, I'm assuming this is the one of the old blades or something. But then you know, there's this final page of some woman, mysterious woman, who's holding the sword. Like it, it like materializes in her hand, like this light. She's like, oh, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, this body ought to work out fine wherever the hell you are, Jason. And I'm like, oh, fine, whatever. Um, yeah, uh, that all cast stuff was some of the worst stuff that the book did in recent memory. So revisiting that doesn't give me much hope for going forward. So that's uh, not going to be fun. I'm really frustrated with the pacing of this uh iceberg lounge stuff that's been i think this is two or three issues now that this has teased this stuff with literally like a page or two pages at the start or the end of the issue and it's just feeling like it's just stagnating and then here having two separate outro teases pick one just pick one you, c you can't have two at the end you can't finish your main story and then have two different two or three page sequences teasing the next issue that's, that's, that's just bad storytelling i'm sorry uh, so for that reason, I'm giving it a three.